Doctor, there are so many amino acids out there with such long names, people get a little confused. What's the difference between non-essential amino acids, essential amino acids, and branch chain amino acids? EAA stand for essential amino acids. And I have to give a little background on how muscle and, and all the tissues in the body work to understand why we need EAAs. Most of the body is made of protein. And protein is continually produced and broken down in the body. And as the uh, protein is broken down, the components of the muscle protein, namely the amino acids, are released into the blood or into the cells. And some of those are irreversibly metabolized and they have to be replaced. They either can be produced in the body or if they're not able to be produced in the body, they have to come from the diet. And the essential amino acids are the amino acids that come from the diet. And those are the key nutrients, in fact, the only macronutrients that we have to eat in our diet to stay alive. And branch chain amino acids. Well, you can buy just about any combination that you want other than a mixture of essential amino acids. Uh, the most popular combination is the branch chain amino acids, which are leucine, isoleucine, and valine. Those three amino acids are three of the nine essential amino acids in our formulation. And the notion that the branch chain amino acids have some unique quality comes from the fact that they play a role in the regulation of the molecular, at the molecular level in the muscle cell. But the problem with using a supplement of branched chain amino acids to stimulate muscle protein synthesis is you still need all the others. They're important, and they're an important part of our mixture, but you need the others as well. And, and uh, we, we, I think that the analogy of a football team is really the most apropos, where, where you could look at leucine as the quarterback. It's really the most important in terms of, of stimulating protein synthesis, and it's the highest composition, highest percent in this composition as well. But you can't have a team of all quarterbacks. You've got to have a complete mixture of all the amino acids to have an intact protein so that, uh, that it's important to have leucine to activate the process. And the same thing with the other two branch chains. But you need all, all of them to make a complete team. That's why the branch chain amino acids, despite their popularity, have actually never been shown to actually stimulate muscle protein synthesis. So that this is uh, something that has developed as kind of a myth of its own without any real scientific basis. And Wait a second. Branch chain amino acids have been around for a while now. You're saying that there hasn't been anything measurably beneficial from it? Not in terms. There have been several studies that, on branch chain amino acids being administered and uh, the effect on human muscle protein, including our own. In fact, that's where my own research began in search of an optimal amino acid mixture, because there's a rationale for why you would think the branch chains might work, but they don't work. We found no beneficial effect, and neither has anybody else. Why, how, how they actually then have gone on to be successful is uh, discouraging to someone who's spent their life in science, because it's really not backed by scientific um, values. Now, the individual amino acids are a, a little more of an interesting case because there's, there are certain circumstances, very uh, usually kind of a rare genetic disease or something, there are one specific amino acid may be useful, or, or particularly uh, an issue of neurotransmitter uh, synthesis or some very, speci very specified reason why you would use one single amino acid. But the problem that inevitably happens with one or even three, as in the case of the branch chains, is that even if you get the desired response, you still have to deal with the fact that you have totally disrupted the normal balance of the amino acids in the blood. And that balance is crucial for maintaining all of the functions of the amino, of the amino acids. So, so that uh, really, I, I, I think that there's no proven place for individual amino acids or the branch chains in nutrition. Mm. If you use the non-essential amino acids, they're really um, kind of redundant because they can be produced in the body. And if you're eating a meal that has any kind of protein, you're going to have enough non-essential amino acids to suffice. So that there's really no reason to ever take a dietary supplement that contains uh, non-essential amino acids if you're eating any kind of normal diet along with it.